Hi everyone, um, welcome back to another part of this um, planner video. This is a picture from Secret Garden, it's rather pretty. Um, I've always liked it and it's been fun having a go with you. And uh, we've just got a little bit left at the bottom to do, so um, let's crack on. I think I'm just going to start on the... I might actually start on the butterfly and the spider as they're coming right into a zoomed in shot and then we'll move on to the um, pots and things at the bottom. Now a spider I'm just going to do him in, oops, in a grey. Now this botanical set has a Payne's grey which is a dark grey. If you don't have a really dark grey use a black so it's the Payne's grey and I'm just going to colour all of him in this in a light layer and then I'm going to try and do a little bit of a darker layer just around the edge. I know he's really small, but it will just hopefully shape his body a little bit. And now I'm just moving on to the butterfly and I'm going to do the head in this grey colour. The body is back, so that's done. Now for the um, butterfly, I'm going to do this one in blue. I haven't used any blue on this page yet at all, so I think it would be rather nice. I'm just sharpening my darker blue colour, which is actually called Ultramarine, but it's a bluey colour. And I'm going to use that near the centre of the butterfly. And then reduce the layers and the amount of pencil as I go out from the centre. So a lot more in the middle, near the body, compared to the edge of the wings. That. and then I want to do the ends of the wings in a lighter blue sharpening this as well okay. this is the cerulean blue oh, light I should just throw it in the air and I'm going to go over the bit of the darker blue put quite a few layers here while they're overlapping and then less towards the edge don't need to worry about getting to the edge of the wing because there's going to be some black there. So just lighten it towards the end. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I need to leave those pencils out so I can tell you what I used, is grab a black pen like I did for the other butterfly. This is the Stedler Pigment Miner 0.2. I'm going to use it on the end of the wings where we've got this section that's been marked off. This isn't working. I think this pen needs to go in the bin. Um, hang on. I'm going to use a black Stedler Tripless Fine Liner. It's, um, I think it's a bit smaller, the end of this one. So that'll be okay. Just to do the tips of the wings on both sides. You can do dots and different things, but I'm just, it's quite a small butterfly, there isn't a lot of room. You could do dots along the wings or whatever if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. Then I am going to get a white pen. Again, I'm going to use this um, 05 Jelly Roll. I'm going to do quite a big white dot on the end of the wing. And then a cup one underneath. And then a few along the bottom. It's quite small, but I think it makes all the difference. But it's up to you if you haven't got the white pen, then that's fine. Just don't. Right, we shall zoom out a little bit and find our next bit to do is this um, vine here. Okay, um, we want it to look a little bit different to the greens that are up here and around here. And what I'm actually going to do is use two greens that we haven't used before in this picture, which are the Viridian and the Fallow Green Light. They're a more bluey green colour. You'll see that as I start. So I'm just going to do the stem first. And I'm going to do it in quite a hard application of colour. Nice and defined. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that's all that we need to do. I'm going to use a little bit at the bottom of each leaf. So just a touch down here and try and fade it up a little bit. And that will give a different tone to the bits of the leaf. Gosh, the sun's shining now. I think I must have just gone behind a huge cloud just now. It's so dark. I've been in the last video because I'm recording all the videos. I don't always do this but all in one go. Sometimes I like to do that. Sometimes I like to break it up for me. Because sometimes, you know, I don't always have time to do a whole series of videos in a day. So sometimes the next time I come to record I fancy seeing something a bit different. Which is why they're not always linked together. Okay, and now we're going to go in with our um, fallow green light. I also find the spelling a bit strange. I don't know whether, because the greys are spelt with an A, not an E, which is the American way to spell grey, which is I've got no problem with. Um, and this word fallow, you can't see it's not in focus, um, in the polychromos is spelt P H T H A L O, and in this set it's spelt P T H O. Hello. And I wonder which other there's a regional variation spelling for that as well. I find it fascinating. Different words, different dialects. It's really interesting. I know um, some people um, actually study it. I find it really interesting. Not as much as I, not so much that I don't want to study it, but my son was saying, oh, why do we have a U in words like behaviour? And, and in America they don't and I said well I always thought that they spelt it the way it was spelt when they like when Americans first people first left the UK and went to America I thought they were spelling it in a certain way and they carried on and we changed it but my son reckoned that that wasn't true and actually the first person who put a dictionary together in America just decided that they were a waste of time and left them out. So I don't know. But I guess that also applies to words like colour and neighbour as well. Perhaps this sound that you make when you say the word isn't affected by the U. We don't really speak or spell phonetically anyway. So I don't know. But uh, some people dislike it spelled incorrectly. Me, incorrectly. I don't think it's incorrect. I just think it's different. Okay, we've done the binder. I can't push my book any higher up because my tripod is in the way. So I am going to have to zoom out a little bit to uh, do the bottom of the page, unless I tip my camera. But I think I'm. I think we'll manage like this. So the next bit is the grass there, and. Um, I think I'm going to use the permanent green. I think this is the nearest in my head to what I would think grass would look like. And I'm just going to fill in the gaps. I'm not going to do anything too special. It's a bit tricky on this corner because it uh, keeps moving. But I'll get there. So it's really simple. I Sometimes I think it's nice to keep some bits really simple makes it easier for you. This the spaces are quite small and difficult to colour. So why not just use one colour? There we go. And you could use a darker one, a lighter one, a really light one. I know I sometimes do. I think it's Peter Hewitt who did one of the pictures from um the duck pond picture from Secret Garden and her grasses are done in three or four different greens and it's the beautiful. Right. And watering can. Now, do we want it silver or coloured is, the in my head, the question. I think I'm going to make it silver. I think it's fun. I'm going to start with a bit of black because we've only got one sil one grey and it's the Payne's grey. So we're just going to, I'm just going to use a little bit of black to get a definition. I think you need more than one colour to, uh, to get a good metallic look. So I'm just going to, I'm not pressing very hard with the black though. I want a shadow, I don't want a, you know, a thick black colour. So 
someone's watching TV next to it, it's quite funny. It's really weird laughing, I don't know if you can hear it. So you can see I've just chosen a few areas to darken slightly. I may go back and do that more, but at the minute I'm just going to go in with my grey. Another short one. And uh, what I with the um, spout, the bottom part is going to be quite dark because it's shadowed and a little bit of dark at the top and now we want to lighten it as we get towards the top and we want to try to leave just a little line of white where the shine is and then we do the same with this bit that's the rose is the i don't know if that's the right name that's what we always used to call it and then i'm going to skip over to the handle emphasize the dark bit there and then lighten towards the top I'm going to have no colour at all right at the top of that bit. We've got this handle as well, be a lot darker at the bottom. And then this up here. The light's going to catch it there. So just bring the colour up and let that bit be pale. With this bit, I'm just going to take a little bit of colour from there and there. Now you could do this in any colour and use the same technique and get a shiny red or blue or green. So I'm going to make, I'm actually going to start going directionally like this for this part. Now what I want is the shine down the middle if I can. Excuse the pun. Can, watering can. Oh I am not a comedian. <laughs> I occasionally make my children smile and that's my, that's amazing. You know, it's very hard to get teenagers to smile, particularly at mum jokes. I sometimes send them memes. Oh mum, I saw that years ago. We look at um, Reddit's much more modern than your Facebook. So try and leave some white in the middle to show, to look like shine. And try and emphasise the darker edges. And not only will that help to emphasise the shine, it will emphasise the curved shape of the can. I seem to talk you through this sort of thing a lot. We'll do it again in a minute when we do the pots. That bit, there we go. A bit of shadow under there. And there. Now, I'm going to leave that there. If I keep fiddling, I'm going to spoil it. So there's our watering can, and now we've got our two pots to do. Just checking your in shot. Is that stone short? I think so, yeah. Okay, we've got some stones. I'm just going to put my finger on them, see if I can see them. Maybe zoom out a tad. I've got a bit of writing at the bottom of my screen, so it's really hard for me to see um, whether you're in shot. Right, so for these stones, I'm going to use this Payne's Grey. And uh, I'm just going to colour them in. I normally really like doing stones in quite a fancy way. These are so small, I'm just going to colour them in, in a sort of even colour of grey. I've chosen grey because we've got a lot of brown going on with this plant tub, wooden plant holder, and we've got soil to colour as well. Now, don't you remember how we did the soil on the plant tub? We're going to do the same way. So the burnt umber in a sort of scribbly motion. Now I'm going to make it quite dark because we've got the, the wood right next to it here. Now this has got a layer of grass growing in the tub, but I'm still going to make the soil brown. I think it might look odd, otherwise if I tried to make it look like it was grass. Right, I think we'll leave that there. We've got this third tub here on the edge, but I can't see any soil, so I'm not putting any on that one. Now I think it might be quite nice to keep all three tubs the same colour. You don't have to do this. I quite fancy doing them as all a sort of terracotta colour. 
I'm going to start with raw umber though and do some dark on the edges and uh, bring that in and slowly add different colours to try and make a terracotta coloured pot. So I'm going to start on the very edge with quite a hard layer and then reduce that towards the centre of the pot. Now terracotta isn't hugely reflective, it's not metallic. I'm not really going to have any white shine but we want a little bit of colour and I'm leaving space because we've got other colours to layer up. So lots of hard colour and pressure. I'm just doing a line so I can see where I'm at to start with. And then reduce it towards the middle. Quite lucky the tree seems to be planted in the middle of the pot. So that's where we'll put our lightest bit. And by, by making the pot lighter in the centre, it should make it look rounder in the same way with, we did with the watering can. That look a bit scruffy and unfinished because it is but I'm going to do every pot with this colour first and then go in with the next colour after. As I said in an earlier video it's much quicker to do all of one colour first and to keep chopping and changing. I just want to make it look half decent though. There we go. That for me is fine for now. And so we're going to move on to this pot and do exactly the same. Got quite a dark layer all the way down. And then the same on this side. Now this pot's overlapping and it's going to be the same colour, but I think it'll be okay. We can put some shadow in there later. I've got a few other things I want to put shadow into. I'm not quite sure what's going on, so I'm just putting a bit of colour here, there and everywhere, lightly, and then mixing it in. There we go. So this one, you could have guessed where the centre of this pot is. I'm thinking it's beyond this edge of this page. So we need to talk, make an approximate line. There, that's it. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to go in with a orange next because I want a more terracotta colour. This is the cadmium orange, is the only orange I have. So we're going to put it down and then we're going to cover it with something and hope that it ends up looking um, like terracotta. So I'm actually just going to apply quite a gentle layer of orange over everything. I am going to make it slightly darker on those edges, but it isn't the colour I want to shine through. It's like my sort of transition colour where I'm using it to, to colour rather than shade, if that makes sense. But we want a bit everywhere. And you can see I'm just going in a little bit harder here. I'm just thinking to myself, and I might as well share my thoughts with you guys about advent calendars. It's only like, you know, October. Well, it's only September actually when I'm recording this, but it's October when it goes out. And I'm thinking about what to do. I'm thinking, got a, last year we bought two each. We were really extravagant because we wanted to support our local shops because um, obviously a lot of them had been forced to close. Um, it was really tricky times for them. This is yellow ochre. I'm going to use over the top again. And um, so we went to our local bookshop. We've got an independent bookshop 
and uh, I don't buy my Johanna Basford and coloring books from them because unfortunately they get them about a week or more after they're released because they just the publishers just prioritize big companies it's a real shame but I want the books early but anyway if I buy books as gifts and things like that I will go in there but we buy we bought lovely advent calendars from there quite expensive as well big ones really nice so we did that and then we also supported our local toy shop and all bought a Lego advent calendar each which was a lot of fun too now my husband has got his eye on the Colt Pens advent calendar and uh, they've got two and they're stationary advent calendars maybe you need to close your ears if you're a stationary fan well I'm sure we all are really but one of them is ink and every window you get a different colour ink this is a uh, burnt umber and I'm going to use it to um, put in some shadow around this pot so you get a bottle of ink so if you've got a dip pen or something like that that might be for you but the other one has a piece of stationery in each day something different now i'm going to emphasize the lip of the pot by putting a darker color underneath it um but i had a look i mean the goods are worth more than the calendar which is good but they're not things that i would have normally bought so wasn't for me but my husband's getting all excited but I've got to talk to the family about what they want to do this year and I'm hoping that Chris we just wanted to spoil ourselves last Christmas because um, we knew we wouldn't be seeing anyone this Christmas we're assuming we will be but you know who knows um, probably Okay, so we've got our terracotta coloured pots. I rather like that. The colours haven't mixed perfectly, but I quite like that effect. But if you do want them to mix more, you could use some blending solution or a blending pencil to really get them to mush up and mix together. Now we've got these two bits to do. Now, because we've used a lot of browns and things, we've got our tree trunk and, you know, we need to think about what brown we haven't used really because we've got brown here we've got brown here so I'm going to start with my raw umber and I'm just going to put some color down and then I'm going to think about whether I want it darker or lighter or whether that's the shade I want to go for really I just want it to look different to the other brands there's no rhyme or reason behind why I'm using this color apart from the fact that I think it might look a bit different Actually, I think I'm wrong. I think it's going to look a bit samey. So I might put some darker brown with it, but I don't want it to disappear into the soil, you know, look too dark. I think I'll just do another layer of this before I put the dark brown on. Yeah, and the, my dark brown is the burnt umber. So I haven't decided about advent calendars, it's just a lot of fun I think, counting down to Christmas is quite exciting, I know it's childish, but you know, it's okay. I actually bought my first Christmas presents today, um, when I was in town, and again supporting a little independent, they've all been saying buy early for Christmas, buy local, yeah, let's uh, make a start, because actually it can get a bit hectic nearer the time, so I did got a few bits which was nice. Now, the leaves. Now, I want them to be different to these greens. Now, we've got the fallow green and the viridian over here. What I think I'm going to do is use the viridian again here as a base, but the other colour won't be the fallow green light, and then it will look different. So, and also, I'm going to make the tip darker rather than the base, just so we're a bit different so obviously I tend to make the base dark but there isn't necessarily the right way to do it I always think because it's more shadowed nearer to the branch but actually leaves aren't all the same color so it might just be that the leaf itself is lighter so anyway let me just do this end and what I'm doing is trying to put a little bit more colour in the tip and fade it down towards the base of the leaf. I'm just 
going to be quite a long video again this one but we'll get it done I'm not going to do a background I've decided I'm actually going to leave this white I quite like it with the white background and it sounds like a cop-out but in the UK we often have a white sky if it's very cloudy gray white perhaps more than just white but you know I mean the ground under the plant pot perhaps could do with something but if I start doing that, then I'm going to start thinking I'd better do something with the sky, and I'm just not going to. Okay, so I'm actually going to go over this now in the permanent green. I'm going to go over the whole leaf with this. It's going to end up looking like the cabbage. Oh well. Never mind. I think it's quite pretty, so perhaps it doesn't matter. It's not like when we're in our garden, we go, oh, can't have two leaves that are the same colour next to each other, they look too samey, do we? And you think this this garden has three pots that are all the same colour, so maybe they'd want leaves that were the same colour. I've got different colour pots in my garden. I have got two terracotta, I think. And I've got purple one which is really different but I don't buy things for the garden people buy them for me which is very nice of them so on occasion so what I've got has been gifted to me apart from the terracotta pot it's actually made of terracotta it's cracked in the frost but it's still only down one side so it's all holding together the soil isn't coming out so to try and turn it round so you can't see the crack when you're looking out into the garden. But I'm not much of a gardener. I just haven't got the patience and time for it. So I like plants that look after themselves. And I've tried, I've been through a phase of trying to grow veg and nothing grew. And uh, I just, you know, I just buy my veg. And our garden is only half a metre deep. It's got concrete under it. So we can't grow veg in the ground, really. We'd have to make some raised beds like this one in this picture and do that. Right, we do have on this pot a little caterpillar and I'm going to do him blue. I did have a thought that I might do him a completely different colour, like a pink or a purple, but I think I'm going to do him blue like the butterfly because we have only got a few bright colours and so we've got the blue from the butterfly and we've got a bit of orange which is in the apples the carrots and the other butterfly and so I think introducing a new colour might just look a little odd what I do have to decide is what colour to make the berries on this bush again I'm not keen on the idea of introducing a brand new colour um, I think I'm going to do the stem on the bush the same colour as the leaves so I'm going to go with, let me think, yeah, I'm going to go with the sap green and I'm going to do the stalk or stem of this bush in a green rather than a brown, just because we've got a lot of brown going on. And this is quite a brownish green lily, or oh, well, it's an olive green, isn't it? Now with the leaves, I think I'm going to do them all over with this. But try to make the tips and the top slightly lighter. I'm going to go over the top of them with a different colour in a bit. And while I'm doing them, I'm going to think about what to do with these little berries. Um, I could do them brown. We've got a lot of brown. Um, I don't want to do them blue. I don't think... I know blueberries are a thing, but I don't think these... Um, Blueberries look black to me, not really blue, really, really dark. So we haven't really got that colour. We could do them black. Um, orange is a possibility. Maybe you'd like a rowan berries in an orange might work. Um, no, we can't do them grey. I don't really want to do green. We could do red. Of course, we've got red in the apple. So let's do them red. That'll work. That'll match in. So I'm doing the same on all these leaves, trying to do a few more layers of colour near the base and then less towards the tip. 
and then when I go over them in my final colour hopefully um, that will emphasise that but if it doesn't it doesn't matter too much there's another train going by I don't know if you hear the they sound their horn as they come by the house because we've got a um, pedestrian crossing over the railway line nearby so uh, they always have to do that in case someone's crossing in fact there's two my son crossed over it one day he said it really frightened him he's not going to do it again which uh, the one by us i think it's got lights on so it's got or tells you indicates whether you need to stop the one he used didn't but you can see a long way but he just freaked him out walking on the line and i'm quite pleased really because there's an alternative route you have to go over the line okay what i'm going to use is the leaf green light to go over the top of all of the leaves That brightens and gives us a whole different colour, which I think is rather pretty. We've got a lot of greens going on, so it's quite nice to invent a new one. And I've definitely decided that red is the way to go with the berries. I'm looking at my butterfly and the white on its wings is a little bit grey. I think it's because I didn't leave enough time for the pen to dry. So uh, that's something worth being careful of. I'm usually quite good at remembering about getting things to dry. It's better when I'm not doing a video because I can actually move it away and uh, not touch it. Whereas I was trying to demonstrate it, I didn't. I knew that if I didn't do it right away, I would forget. I know I often forget things in videos like the, um, the poor owl without a beak <laughs> in um, I don't think his eyes were coloured either that was a uh, miniature enchanted forest with bambino crayons whoopsie I still haven't put them in I don't think I don't know whether I had a plan and I forgot or I don't know okay so red so this is the um, red ochre. Now I'm going to sharpen it because they're really little, these berries. But I think it will actually provide some balance across the page as well because we've got the red on the far side and it will just balance out with the, these red berries. I hadn't really thought too much about balancing out until I watched a Johanna Basford video and she was talking about it and it made sense. So we're not going to do anything special, it's just getting some colour in the little tiny gap. And I mustn't forget that we've got, oh, I pressed too hard, one plant left to do, which is this little one down here. Um, what should we do? I'm thinking if we just use the Viridian on its own, we haven't used it on its own anywhere and I think it's quite dark and it will just work. And I'm not going to do anything special shading wise. I'm just going to fill in the gaps. And I think it's quite dark. It will look different to everything else which is the plan. Now let me zoom out and let me see whether I've remembered to include everything. You can see the mess on my desk now I've zoomed out. Well, I've got a huge pile of pencils over here. Okay, that's as zoomed out as I can go, so we'll have to cut off the top of the ball. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's the picture. I'm just going to dim my light a little bit. Oh, it doesn't want to work. Come on, light. No, let me try it like that. And I think you can see... Um, when I'm further away, I think it's better when it's dimmed a little bit. I don't know. But there we go. 
there's the finished picture so I hope you enjoyed that video and thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed doing every part or if you haven't there are all parts available if you want to do them and uh, happy colouring <laughs>